Welcome back to Two Gals in a Glass Half Full. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can follow along on all the upcoming stuff we have. But today, we're going to talk about strength training versus cardio, tra cardio um, training. What should we do and why is each of it important? One better than the other? We're going to answer all your questions in today's episode. But before we get started, Dr. Jess, what is in your glass? Well, this morning I'm working on my cup of coffee. It's a low acidic bean and a little bit of half and half. And that way it kind of gets me going for the day. Uh, Dr. Bobby, what's in your glass? I have a little coffee in my mom fuel cup, which is very much appropriate for today. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And like Dr. Bobby said, uh, one of the questions that uh, oftentimes patients or people that we know ask is, like, what is the difference between doing cardio exercise and doing strength training? And is one better than the other? And the answer is, is that they're different and the benefits are different. Uh, so you really want to do them both. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, when it comes to cardio, right, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Like, what is cardio exercise? So cardio exercise is is an exercise that's going to get your heart elevated and it's going to stay elevated. You're going to sustain that increased heart rate for a certain amount of time. Kind of the difference with strength training is your heart rate's going to elevate, but then after you do the exercise, you take a break, the heart rate comes back down. Where cardio, um, you're going to kind of keep it. Now, it doesn't you can still go up and down within cardio. So for example, if you're running, walking, when you're running, that heart rate's going to go up. When you walk, it's going to come back down, but it's still going to stay elevated above kind of your baseline when you're just everyday functioning. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important is because when you increase your breathing rate and you increase your heart rate, your lungs and your heart are doing work. And so that's what keeps them healthy. So if you really want to have healthy heart, healthy lungs, which means lowered blood pressure, improved um, stamina, that blood flow that's going actually perfuses the brain with blood as well. So it helps with what we call neurogenesis in the brain, which is the formation of new nerve pathways. So that can improve mood, focus, concentration. It's preventative for degenerative illness of the brain. Um, it's so there's like a lot of organ benefit when you think of cardiovascular exercise. So decreasing risk of heart disease, anything that's going to like break down organs and lead to chronic illness later, it's preventative for that, which is a huge reason for being, for participating in regular cardiovascular exercise. One of the things I love is how with cardiovascular exercise, your body becomes more efficient at using the oxygen it has. So when we breathe in and out, we're breathing the same amount of oxygen in and exhaling carbon dioxide. But what happens is when our body, um, so if you think about a muscle getting stronger, your heart is a muscle. Now it is a different type of muscle than your biceps or any, you know, the muscles you use to walk, stuff like that, but it is a muscle and it can get stronger. And so when that muscle gets stronger, it can pump more blood um, and our oxygen is carried inside that blood to our organs, to our muscles, and our body becomes more efficient at using that oxygen, which is really cool because it's not like I'm breathing more oxygen in. I just become better at using it. Mm -hmm. And delivering it to wherever it needs to be delivered, which is mm -hmm. everywhere, right? Yeah. So it's our muscles need oxygen to be able to contract and relax our brain needs oxygen, all of the organs that, that function in our body need oxygen. So when we think about cardiovascular exercise, yes, we want to be able to run faster and swim faster and compete in races and, and do all of that fun stuff that you train for. But the real backstory, right? So like, that's kind of like your short term plan. Like your short term plan is I want to PR my next race. I want to be able to keep up with my kids. I don't want them to beat me, you know, when I'm running across the yard or, you know, things like that. So that's all like very short term planning and short term thinking, which is great. And we get a lot of benefit from that. It's also important to understand that you're also at the same time, you're playing the long game. And that long game is really keeping your body functioning at a high rate because of all of the improved efficiencies. So you're getting both, which is really, really cool when you think about it. 
tons of gains. And really, you get those gains from a minimum of 30 minutes, five days a week. And that's moderate intensity. So Dr. Bybee, when we talk about moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise, how do I know what that is? I don't know what moderate is. So my favorite way to tell if I'm moderate or kind of, you know, above that is what we kind of know as the talk to us. So when you're exercising, now, if you're able to talk like Dr. Jess and I are right now, your heart rate's probably not elevated enough. But when you're talking like, yeah, okay, next stop light. Yes, I got it. And you you have that, like, you can say it like a sentence or a short sentence, but then it's like, <gasps> and then you can say another one and you're going like that. You can still hold a conversation, but it's a different type of conversation. It's very short words, very short sentences. Um, and it's kind of more back and forth with someone that is moderate. If you're at the point where you can't talk at all, you are, that's strenuous. You have gone above moderate and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just not what is required for health benefits. Um, right. We're looking at that moderate range. So just think little shortness of breath and I couldn't speak forever. Like I need to like breathe. I need a second to kind of get back. And then I could say another few words. And so that's the oh. key is like, is maintaining that level of conversation. Cause I think one of the common uh, misconceptions is I need to go out and just run. Right. And you go quickly into strenuous and then your recovery, you come all the way back down with your heart rate and you fully recover back down to a resting heart rate because you, you know, you went past moderate, you dropped past moderate back down to easy. Right. And then you bring it back up to strenuous and you can't talk anymore and you're out of breath and you're like miserable. And then you come all the way back down to a resting heart rate. So that's more of like a yo-yo uh, type of cardio. And it's really not all that fun when you're, especially if you're first getting started, it's very uncomfortable. So just think if it's getting to the point where you're having a hard time talking, slow it down a little bit. That's all. Just slow it down to the point where you can continue to talk. And then you might speed it up a little bit and then slow it down a little bit. And then that's going to keep you in that moderate range. That way you can sustain the activity and it's not a darn roller coaster for your heart rate. <laughs> so, because what we want to teach your body is how to comfortably work in that elevated range. So it's work, it's not resting, but it's not so over the top that you're like miserable. And so finding that is going to be different for everybody. And it's going to be different for the activity. And it's going to be different on a day-to-day -day basis. If it's really hot and humid, your heart is going to spike faster. If it's like low humidity, 72, it's not going to spike as quickly. If you haven't slept well, it's going to spike faster. If you're well rested, it's going to spike slower. So there's a lot of variables. So that's why if you just practice the talk test, you're going to meet yourself where you are that day in that activity and then you can keep it balanced and you can keep it monitored you don't have to cert like there's no certain number that you have to shoot for it really it's different for everybody so just like don't compare yourself to somebody else do your own you and you'll you'll figure it out so so we know like cardio is elevating your heart rate um kind of we want that moderate amount uh where we can we're struggling to hold a conversation, but we can hold a conversation. And we know we want to do it five days a week for 30 minutes. Now, that's not necessarily where we have to start out. Um, if we are not doing five minutes right now, maybe you start with five minutes a day um, and you slowly build your way up. I would think of 30 minutes five times a week as maintenance, not where you start. That's what you build oh. up to. Yep. Um, so, but Dr. Jess, when looking at cardio, now we have that big picture of what cardio is. Can you give me one or two of your favorite cardio that we kind of would probably expect to be cardio and then one or two activities that is cardio, but most people may not recognize it as cardio. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have been listening know I love running. So like running is my preferred cardio. 
uh, I don't walk very well. I just, I, I just get bored easily. I need to move quickly. Um, so running is my favorite. Uh, my other form of cardio that I really enjoy is I love bike riding um, because it, again, it's just that sustained activity. And so in order for a bike ride to be cardiovascular exercise, though, it's not that like slow bike ride. I mean, you got to, you know, you got to pedal and, and that for me, those are probably my two favorites. Um, now other things that could be heart cardio that you might not realize. I like, if I mow the lawn, right. If I'm pushing that mower and I'm going quick, like, and I'm, I'm walking quickly and I'm, my heart rate's elevated. I can feel like I'm breathing harder and it takes me a full hour. If we, if I mow the front and back, it like, it's, it's a full hour of, of moving and pushing that mower. Um, so that's cardiovascular exercise. My heart rate was elevated the whole time. Uh, the other thing that might be for me that I do that, um, might not seem as cardio is when I'm doing yard work. So if I'm sitting and weeding, no, right. Like my heart rate's not elevated, but if I'm like, you know, getting mulch in the front yard, or if I'm like digging up a bunch of stuff, you know, I do a lot of like transplanting and moving stuff around. I'm really into <laughs> plants. Um, but if I'm doing a big project where there's a lot of like up and down and moving and digging and pushing and pulling and lifting, like my heart rate, you know, and I, and, and I keep it elevated to get that workout in is, you know, if I feel it start coming back down, I'm like, Oh, let me, let me walk across the yard quickly to go get whatever I need. And then I'll walk quickly back. And, you know, so I'll keep the heart rate going just so I can get the workout in at the same time. Mm -hmm. So then I, you know, I, I don't have to run that day. Um, <laughs> But I got, I get my five days that way. Cause I don't really want to run five days. I don't, you know, I like, I like kind of spacing it out and I love the mm -hmm. outcome of yard work. You know, I like that you can visually see the end result. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, what are your favorites? So I, I love walking. Um, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm getting actually been recently getting back into running. Um, it's been a long process to get back in, but lately I've been trying to do it about twice a week. Um, and when I tell you we start small when we're running, my goal is 10 minutes. I go out and I walk for a total of about 20 minutes and I run for 10. So it equals the 30 minutes, but I walk a little bit, I run for 10 and then I walk the rest of the way. Um, so it's been good. Um, like Jess, I love bike riding, um, but to do say something different, one of the biggest things that cardio recently is playing with my daughter outside and running and chasing her and pushing her in the car and helping her because it's squat like you realize how much your heart rate um, kind of goes up and down through there and kind of sustains at that level. If you're running and chasing and playing and down the slide, taking her to a park, you know, things like that um, where you have to watch her, mm -hmm. um, especially if she's 13 months. So it's not like a three, five-year-old where you can be like, Hey, see you later. No, I'm like out there chasing her, teaching her how to climb. So um, that's been a favorite. The other one that I I love my Apple watch and I know there's a lot of, there's Android watches out there. There's other types of watches, but I love my Apple watch because my most active days, both for like calories burned and uh, exercise are the days where I'm cleaning the house. And now I don't, I live in, I have two flights of stairs. It's kind of like a split level. So there's a down and up, it's not like a three story house. Um, but when I'm going up and down those stairs all day long, like you just don't realize how much when you're doing laundry, carrying laundry up, carrying laundry down, when you're mopping, when you're vacuuming, when you're kind of just, we're redoing a lot part of the house. So moving containers, you know, here and there, it's amazing how much, how many times I close my rings just by cleaning. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause as, and if you just keep it going, Right. So yeah, I think a lot of times what we'll do is we'll do something like, oh, let me sit, let me rest, mm -hmm. let me do this. But if you just kind of if you just know, use that time to just like push it through, uh, keep the heart rate going. Like it's like now it turns into a workout. It's like you're getting so much done. Like you don't have to go to the gym to get in cardio is the whole point. Like you don't have yeah. to like it can be both. You can start mixing life in with exercise. So we talked a lot about cardio, yep. but we want to know the difference between cardio and 
kind of, you know, there's other words. So there's strength training, resistance training. They all kind of umbrella the same thing. Um, so we're going to globalize it into strength training because you don't always have to have resistance to get stronger. Your body weight can be the resistance you need. Mm -hmm. um, so Dr. Jess, we're going to switch gears and looking at strength training. What does strength training involve and how is it different than cardio and why is it necessary? So strength training is completely different than cardio, right? <laughs> so cardio, we have one activity and we're sustaining it for a period of time to keep the heart rate elevated. Strength training, what we're doing is we're actually going to be challenging different muscles and we're going to be overloading those muscles and we're going to be changing muscle groups throughout the workout. So how we do that, how we overload a muscle is we just see what, how does that muscle typically function? And then we resist it somehow, right? So our biceps bend our elbow. So if we want to overload that muscle, so instead of just having to you move the weight of my lower arm, I might put a dumbbell in my hand. And then if I bend my elbow with the resistance of the dumbbell, that muscle is going to have to do work. And as it does work, that's how it builds and gets stronger. I could use a TheraBand and I could do that. There's a lot of different ways that we can overload a muscle, but the whole concept is, is that we're going to ask the muscles to do more than normal amount of work. And from there, there's a lot of things we could do with that, yeah. but that's the main concept. Uh, so we can overload it with high reps um, which means we're going to have lower weight because if we're going to do 30 reps of an exercise, it can't be a high weight, or we can completely look at the other side of that and we can do really, really high weight and low reps. Those are going to give us two very different outcomes. So it just kind of depends. Do I want to build really big muscles that look, look really, really big? Well, then I'm going to have to have heavy, heavy weight. Do I want muscles that are toned that have good endurance then I'm going to do higher reps, lower weight. So it just kind of depends on what are we looking for. But no matter what, the stronger we keep our muscular system, the better we're going to support our spine, our joints. It's supportive to our metabolism itself, which is great for weight management, glucose control, um, so that we're preventative for diabetes or if you're pre-diabetic to get that back down into a normal glucose level. Um, so there's a lot of um, osteoporosis um, prevention if we do body weight support with like loading our bones if we're standing. Um, so there's tons of benefits for why we do strength-based training. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, if I was somebody, right, that wanted to start a strength training, like I don't even know what to do. I walk into a gym and I look around and I am overwhelmed. There are machines everywhere. They're big. They're scary. There's treadmills. There's that area where like all the people go and there's a mirror and I don't really want to stare at myself and there's <laughs> yoga balls and bands and stuff over there. Like, I don't even know what to do, right? I feel so overwhelmed. So like, what's a good starting point? So, well, first I'm going to say, if you're in a gym and you're in a good gym, the starting point is they should offer you a free introduction where they introduce you to the equipment. They will take you around and they'll show you some of the equipment. They'll show you how to use it and, you know, where to start. A good gym should do that. So first, if you're in a gym, that's where you should start. Um, but if you're not in a gym that has that, you know, I personally would probably start with some body weight stuff. You don't need to even pick up any machines. You don't need to pick up weights. I mean, you don't need to, well, hopefully you're not picking up machines, um, but you don't need to pick up any weights. You don't need to use the machine. You can start with body weight, squats sit to stands, just standing, sitting down to a chair, standing up, um, lunges. Uh, you know, what's great is I love TRXs, but again, it's a, it's an equipment that you need to learn how to use, but there's so much out there. And you found us on YouTube, on YouTube, there's a ton of places to search for free to look for beginning routines and ideas of where to start. Also, Dr. Jess, you have an amazing course that kind of mm -hmm teaches people um, how to start with exercise and we're learning all the major muscle groups um, and it's not as overwhelming 
and challenging as you it may sound or it may feel. Um, but it does take just a little bit of time to kind of learn. Right. And I think the biggest thing is saying, like, what is my intention? Like, if I go in and I start an activity, oftentimes what we do is we go, oh, I just want to get stronger. Okay. But that's like a very nebulous goal, right? Like, the stronger means stronger in your upper body, your lower body, your core. Does it mean big muscles? Does it mean endurance? Like, what does that mean to you? So really, I think... Anytime I'm working with somebody that has like, uh, especially as we're transitioning out of a plan of care with pain and we're getting into that, like, okay, what are we looking at with this active lifestyle? It's what do you want? Like, do you want to be able to do that hike with your friends or family? Do you want to be able to get on and off of the floor easily with kids or grandkids. Uh, like what, like, what is like, what do you want out of life? Like, what do you want to be able to participate in? And then I like to match the strength training with what you want to do. You know, I've got patients that are bodybuilders, right? They want to have big muscles that show very well in events. Right. Um, I clearly do too. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Um, so it just kind of depends on like, what is your goal? Like, do you want to be faster with a certain activity? Do you want to be a faster runner? Well, then your strengthening and your cross training needs to match being a runner. Like if you're doing the same strengthening as a bodybuilder, but you want to run faster, that doesn't match. Right. And so that's kind of the whole, the whole idea is you can customize this to you. You can get what you want out of it. That's fun. I also like to really encourage people that one side or the other, whether it's in like low rep, high weight versus high rep, low weight, it's not good to be on either side and only do that. Because here's the thing. I think a lot of, um, I'll use females, for example, because I think this is a, a lot of females don't want to look bulky, right? Mm -hmm. Well, looking bulky isn't just lifting a weight. It requires a very specific plan. There's a reason people get pay a lot of money to get a plan to bulk up. Um, and it has to include diet. It has to include very uh, high weights at a long period of time. So, I mean, high, high, uh, sorry. You have to do this very consistently, right? If you want to bulk up, you have to lift heavy, heavy weights and a very strategic plan to get bigger. Yeah. As a female, you want to be able to lift up your 50 pound kid. If you're picking up five pound dumbbells all day long and that's all you ever pick up, you're not, you may be able to pick up your 50 pound kid, but you may be hurting afterwards. So as we need to also realize that it's important to pick up that heavier weight, we're just not doing it every day. So you wanna make sure you're alternating. The same with um, people that lift heavy weights, they need to be able to also do higher reps. They need to increase the endurance. It really will help your goal by doing both. Um, It'll right. make you better and more well-rounded. I, absolutely. And that's where it's like just kind of playing with it and getting to know a little bit more about strengthening and what you can actually get out of strengthening and how mm -hmm. you can strengthen is like really, really cool. Um, I'm a big fan of whole body strengthening. I like mm -hmm. to have two days a week where I strengthen and I get core, I get deep muscles, I get global muscles, I get all of it done in one workout, you know, and I, I can do that twice a week and there's an efficiency there. Uh, so there are some people that will go to the gym and they'll do a leg day and then they'll go to the gym the next day and they'll do an arm day. They'll go to the gym the next day and they'll do a core day and then they'll go to the gym again and do a leg day and they'll go to the gym again and do an arm day. And that's fine. Like if you have the time in your schedule to do that and you can get in your cardio as well, because otherwise you're not getting in all of those other health benefits of cardio. And that's great. Um, there's a lot of us out there that don't have that kind of time. And so I, was, I, I, was gonna I, say, I feel like that's a lot for performance. Like those are people yes. that are looking for, it's like their job in a way, you know? Yeah. Um, and it should not be everyone's expectation. Exactly. But you don't have to work out like that. But I think that's people think of, well, that's how I have to do it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. no, I only do two days a week and I work out in my backyard right? Like I have a couple of dumbbells. I've got TRX straps and a BOSU. 
And believe me, I can do some pretty high level strengthening just with that, mm -hmm. that equipment alone. I don't have, uh, I don't have the cost of monthly gym memberships or, or the time commitment of driving there, getting out, getting set up, coming back. Like I can do it with my kids in the backyard. Um, you know, it, it, it works for a busy person. Um, I know Dr. Bobby, she works out in her backyard, you know? So like, even just like lifting your kids a bunch of times, like, I mean, I'll do like squats and I'll hold a kid. I'll do walking lunges with a kid on my back. You know, I'll do a plank and have somebody like <laughs> jump on my back. I can't do push-ups with my six-year-old on my back. I'm not that strong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also then, you know, for your lifestyle, it's very functional because how many times are you out and your child is tired and you have to carry them? you know, like it, it That's now becomes, <laughs> it now becomes like, it's making your life easier. And I, it's just, it's more fun for me, for me. Right. Um, I'm just, I used to go to a gym. I, I miss my yoga. I do say that mm -hmm. I do miss the yoga, but at the same time, it's just not in my life right now. It's not in the cards and I'm finding other ways to enjoy, you know, working and in the out. Future it might be right? You might go right. back to that gym once the kids are teenagers and they're off doing their own thing. And that's, that's fine. Right. So there's different phases that we go through. I used to have a gym membership. Now I don't, it's not wrong. I enjoyed it. I just don't have the time anymore. And I think a lot of people are in that crunch where they don't have the time and it feels like, you know, gosh, to get there and get all done and do kid pickup and get dinner done and get homework done and all the other stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. you could just do a routine at home you know, and yes. have a kid, your kids join you and they learn what an active lifestyle looks like. And now you're modeling that behavior and they're becoming, this is just how they think. So they just don't know any different. I mean, I know like my oldest, when he, um, he learned how to ride a bike, maybe, maybe when he was about five, he learned. And then like the first bike ride, like that he went on was a five mile bike ride. He doesn't know any different. <laughs> like he just knows like, this is what we do, you know? And so I was running and he was biking. We just did a route and you know, he came back. And I was like, my legs are tired. I was like, and what does that mean? He was like, my muscles are bigger. I'm like, there you go. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Tired's yeah. not bad, right? No. Pain, yep. it, we don't want, but tired. Okay, great. Your muscles just didn't well, really good work. And I think people need to understand there's a difference between pain and like my muscles worked. Right. And that soreness, that burning that you feel in that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I find a lot of people don't know that difference and right. it's not intuitive. So it's, you have to make sure you understand the difference. I always call pain is like that sharp pain, like that nasty, it's your warning system to your body. Legs burning. Uh, I feel like they're jiggling. <laughs> Barely. Really it's tired. Almost want to give out. Yeah. You work really hard. <laughs> That's all that yeah. is. Yeah. maybe decrease the intensity a little if you don't want to feel the jiggly <laughs> real jiggly right oh, we've all been there though yeah we have all been there and felt those when you walk and it's like D exactly i'm gonna make it up the stairs yeah <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna get up off the toilet today but you know like i just did really good work and my muscles are in the repair process and they will repair stronger than they were so i call mm -hmm. that earned soreness like you earned it you know, yes, um, yes. and you're going to get a result of improved strength from it. So you get mm -hmm. a result from what you go through, which is really cool. So, so we talked about kind of cardio resistance. They are different. They're very different, but they are both very much necessary for us to live healthy. And the really neat thing is the more cardio you do, the better your muscles are going to be able to recruit, the better the oxygen is going to be able to get to those muscles. So the stronger you're going to get and vice versa. If you're a runner and you don't ever do strength training, you're going to have some overuse injuries, most likely not everyone, but most of the time, because you need strength to do a run. You need strength to ride a bike. You need strength to do long cardio sustained activities. So they really are reciprocated um, and really important to do both of them doesn't mean it has to be done every day mm -hmm. um but you need to get it in every week um and dr joss if people want to learn more about your course exercise where to start where can they find it and what are they going to learn in that so we've got it'll be in the episode description below and then on our two gals website we've got it on there i think it's in a drop down courses something like that there's on the website which is um, www.2-gals.com 
And so all that information is in there. And pretty much the course is just walks you through like, hey, what is like, what is this big picture of exercise? How do I set up my own cardiovascular program? And what does that look like for me? How do I monitor it? Um, I have you go through an entire uh, like a, essentially like a series of like simple little tests to see where am I right now? Like, do I have like, it's called like your heart rate recovery. So like, how am I doing on the cardiovascular level? And so I have you go through a three minute step test and then kind of monitor your heart rate. Like, how did you do? How did you recover? Like, and then I, you know, you look in your little chart, like, where am I starting? It's just going to help you give objectivity to, you know, maybe I need to start like walking and really get better with like my heart rate recovery. And then I can start building into running once that gets better. I have you go through a bit of a screen of like, can I do a proper squat? Can I do like some of these movements without pain with normal range of motion? Um, because you don't really want to start strengthening and loading your body down if you have improper movement patterns. So, cause then that's when you're going to get hurt and that's a total bummer. And so really what you want to do is first say like, how can I correct some of these things that might be going on? So you go through a screen and then anything that's not like great right away, then I give you corrective things to do to improve those. Then we go through and we really talk about what is strengthening, what are all of the muscles in the body that we would like to strengthen? How do we build a routine that starts where you can start? And then how do you make that routine efficient? Because like you can do... 10 exercises and it can take you an hour. You could do 10 exercises and it could take you 20 minutes. So like, I'm all about the 20 minutes, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and so it's how do I combine muscle groups to get a whole body workout efficiently so that I'm not spending more than 20 or 30 minutes doing my strength routine? Because time is, time is difficult. You, there's just no more time in the day. It is what it is. It's a fixed number. Um, and then also, how do we maintain our mobility, right? So how do we warm our bodies up? And then how do we load our bodies safely? What does that look like? How do we do that efficiently? How do we cool down and maintain our flexibility and mobility, which we're going to be doing an entire episode here about flexibility and mobility, um, so that we have that understanding of like, why is that important? Because it really, really, really is. Dr. Byman and I have been working as physical therapists now for a long time. And that's one of the number one things we see that people just don't have enough of, which leads to why they come into our offices. So if you can learn how to not come in, that's the goal, <laughs> right? Um, so, uh, so that's kind of like overall what the course covers. And by the time you're done, like, you know, you don't need a personal trainer to walk you through it. Like you will have the tools, you will have your ability to build your own workouts and to progress your own cardio program and to be able to include flexibility and mobility into what you're already doing. Um, so it's just trying to put you into your own driver's seat. That's like the main, the main goal of the course. Um, so, awesome. uh, yeah. So if you are interested in that, click on the episode description. Um, there's going to be a link in there. And then also just make sure to follow us on social media, you know, give us a little like or thumbs up, things like that it all helps with like algorithms and whatever <laughs> what happens in the social media world. And then if you found this episode helpful, like share it with somebody that um, might find it to be helpful for them. Uh, I think movement is the number one thing that we can do to live longer, healthier lives and to improve our life now and later. So I just, I, I'm just, Dr. Byman and I are both so passionate about movement because it's literally free to do. And there's like the, the amount of benefits, it's like just astronomical. So, um, so keep spreading the word, keep getting people out there, get movement in. It doesn't have to be scary. I promise. Um, it can be fun. <laughs> it really can be. Um, all right, everybody. We'll see you next week.